So in this part, we'll look at how we can apply different kinds of pre-processing and feature extraction to our data in order to maximize the most of our data sets. So to do that, you go to the preprocessor tab and we can see that our project, the Siren one, we already have a preprocessor, which is a Fourier transform with different kinds of uh, filters. So we have an extensive library of different functions. And um, if you just hit the plus, you can go there and then you can see all the different kinds. So if we click on this hamming smoothing, for example, and then click show details, then you get a bit more information about what this uh, feature does. And for example, we can also go to this uh, complex discrete Fourier transform, the real discrete Fourier transform. And uh, from here, you also can see the implementation and uh, we also have basic mathematical functions, for example, this averaging one. And lastly, you also have the ability to add the uh, sliding windows as an example. And this is a core uh, preprocessor um, in machine learning. So you'll probably always want to have at least one of these in your system. The when it comes to pre-processing, it's always important to get an understanding of your data and to apply the right pre-processing and feature extraction in order to maximize the, the output of your data. A vital part of the platform is the ability to create your own custom units and add them to the pre-processing library. So, Within the platform, it's just a matter of going to the settings tab and adding the, the file path to where you have the custom units. So you can see here, uh, there's a browse unit library and that just shows you the, the entire library. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder in our project called uh, custom units. And uh, we're going to add uh, our own custom unit that we've built already. So we've uh, copied this uh, the unit library and now pasted it into our project. Now you can see it here. This is the this uh, folder we're opening now. So within this folder, there is uh, three files: the .h file, which has the C code the .py file, which has the Python code of our custom unit, and uh, finally the IM unit file, which has uh, which tells the platform what kind of settings and how to manage the data and things like that. So all you need to do is just make sure that you add this file path. So we add this custom unit file path, and then click on browse unit library just to confirm that it's there. It's always good to reload the library just to make sure that everything is loaded correctly. And you can see that now we have this resolution rescaling unit in our library. And we can see that there is some information about how it's built and what kind of data does it uh, take in. So now if we can navigate back to our preprocessor and look at the library, we can see this uh, new unit at the bottom under IAM unit and we can uh, select the settings that we want to add it with. In this project, we won't add this unit. I just wanted to show how to add custom units into your project. So when you're in your preprocessor, an important thing is that you can customize it according to your needs. So for example, if we look at this uh, sliding uh, uh, window or the mail filter bank, here let's, uh, let's update our Preprocessing, and what we're doing is we're increasing the number of filters and uh, keeping everything else the same. And what this is actually doing is increasing the resolution of our data sets. But of course, we get an error because we changed the dimensions of our previous layers, so we need to update our sliding window. So here we need to update the 30 in the window shape to 35 and update the, the strike to 210. And uh, with that, now we see that we've cleared our errors and now it's uh, working correctly. The next thing that we're going to do is actually uh, visualize this uh, preprocessor to see how it looks. So we create, we hit the create track uh, feature and then it pops up a window to show us which 
which layers will be applied to this data. And you can see that it uh, left out the sliding window, which is uh, important because it helps us to visualize it better and we can adjust the sliding window accordingly. And we're going to update the name so that we don't overwrite the previous one. So this one is using 35 filters, so we're just going to call it that so it's easy to keep track of them. And then with that, you just hit OK and uh, it will uh, start processing the, the data. And essentially what it's doing is running all the data sets through this preprocessor, as you can see in the terminal. And then after some time, it will finish preprocessing. So after some time, the preprocessing will finish and you'll, uh, it will run through all of the data sets. Now we can actually look at the preprocessing that we just applied. So to do that, you go back to the data tab and uh, navigate to one of the data files. Here we're going to try to pick something that's uh, interesting with lots of uh, labels so we can look at how the different labels look like in the preprocessing. So we're going to select one of these files. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that we're viewing the data in the right format. So this uh, preprocessing is being shown as a signal, but we want to view it as a heat map. So we click on that and then adjust the chart type to a heat map. And then we can play through the data set. So what we can see is we can see the time series data, the old preprocessing, the a model output, which is an old model, and then the new preprocessing. And then finally, we can see the labels as well at the bottom. So let's zoom out so we can see more of it. And let's navigate to the middle where it's usually more interesting. So the important thing to notice is that compared to the old preprocessor, the new one has uh, more bins in the vertical axis. And this is because now we have 35 filters as opposed to the previous 30. And uh, it's important to note that you can also drag out the track so you can make it easier to visualize.